Hey guys, Majefries here, and welcome back to You Don't Win Anything With Kids. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to say apologies for my voice. I have a cold again. I'm getting colds like hot dinners at the moment, so um, you'll have to bear with me if I'm sniffling and coughing and I sound like this. Um, I'll do my best to, to not let it affect the video. Anyway, we are here. See here, we are in the process of a board takeover. This came as a bit of a surprise to me, because one minute... Um, we're not doing great in the league, I should start with that, actually. We're sixth in the league. We should be a lot higher. We're something like 11 points off the leaders, which... Um, we're quite a long way back, basically, at this stage of the season. And the board weren't very happy with me. At one point, they asked me to explain why we lost a match. And I think I just about got away with that one. Um, but we're also in the middle of a board takeover. And I'm a little bit worried about that because there's a very good chance that the new board might want their own, or the new chairman, might want their own manager, and I could be out of a job. So all I can do really is carry on just playing the matches, trying to win, do my best. That's all I can do right now. Um, and on that note, we do have a match. And it is against AFC Hornchurch. And let's get into it. <coughs> Now there aren't that many changes I want to make to this lineup. The only thing I want to change is O'Brien for King, because obviously King's injured. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, Ahmed Abdullah. I think I signed him in an episode. If I didn't, there he is. Um, he's scored a couple of good goals for us actually since he joined. And we have a pretty decent um, team ethic going along right now. We're not winning every game, but we're playing well, and they're linking up well, and they're creating chances well. So right now I'm not too worried about um, results. Obviously I'd like to carry on winning games, but I'm not going to force it. Um, we have a couple of other players. Oliver Rissa, I think I remember signing in an episode. Stacey Long, I brought him in as midfield cover. He's a pretty good player, considering... Ow, just kicked my desk. Um, considering he's 29 years old. Uh, other players in and around the team. Douglas Pringle hasn't actually played for us yet. See, he's not the best player we have. I might loan him out in Season 2, if anybody wants him. Uh, and we have the usual injuries. King, Ortega, Francois and Wilson. We're always going to have injuries. It's part and parcel of the game, unfortunately. But anyway, I'm happy with this lineup. Everyone's in a pretty decent condition. So, uh, let's get into the game. Kramer and Smith up front is a partnership I never really thought I'd see. But I tried it out, and it worked. So, for now, I'm sticking with it. <coughs> and here's kickoff. This is a competition that I want us to win this season. I can't see why we wouldn't win unless we have a real upset. Uh, Hornchurch, AFC Hornchurch. Challenging opponent, but I reckon we can pull it off. I reckon we can do it. There's also something else I want to discuss with you guys in this episode. <coughs> and that is, last time I did You Don't Win Anything With Kids, I got to episode... Oh, Kramer scored. Let me interrupt myself to say, to say Kramer scored a really good goal there. Good cross in from uh, the left hand side. Was it Jones played it to Delamond? He crossed it in. Kramer with the header at the near post. It was Beckhold, sorry, to Jones. To Delamond. Yeah, good goal. See? That's what I mean about team ethic. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, it was 155 episodes the last series of You Don't Want Anything with Kids, and we only got as far as I believe it was the beginning of the championship season. Um, so obviously I don't want this series to be as long as that, to get to that stage. I'd like to be in the Premier League by the time we reach 100 episodes. So in order for that to be doable, um, this will be the last episode in this season. Football season, not series season. Unless something big happens. So if we make it to like round 3 of the FA Cup, which we're not going to be doing this season anyway. But say that happened and we drew Man United at home. <clears throat> Obviously, I will show that that match. But right now, we're playing non-league teams. We're not winning pretty if we are winning. Um, the matches themselves aren't that interesting to watch. And <clears throat> the squad are still starting to develop and gel, so they're not playing at their best. So I think it's only fair that um, we do like a season review as the next episode of this. And then we start showing more matches as we progress through the leagues. So you get to see the team developing as they're actually developing, rather than as they're still trying to learn the ropes, which they're doing right now. 
Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to carry on doing that. As for now, I am going to be doing that method. So, unless something massive happens, even if we make a cup final, if we make the trophy final, then obviously I will show that game. But um, <clears throat> if if we just do well in the league, uh, I might show the last match of the season if we're in a good position. If we're not in a good position, then I'll just do a season review. That's 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 the idea that I had. Hopefully, you guys agree with me on that one. Um, anyway, let's head back to the match, shall we? Let's see what's going on. So we're nearly quarter of a no. We're nearly a third of the way through the first half. My math is letting me down. Free kick on the edge of the box. Jones steps up and over the wall and over the bar. Not a very good one there. Left backs I find are normally quite good at free kicks. It tends to be a thing nowadays that left backs take free kicks. Leighton Baines springs to mind <coughs> as a good left back who can take free kicks. There are others. They're not really jumping out at me right now. I know Scott Laird used to take them for Stevenage and penalties. Um, so I don't know what that is. What I do know is we're one all. See now what Jones should have done on that free kick is what Curley's just done on his. Up and over the wall and under the bar. Keeper probably didn't stand much of a chance in saving that. It was on the wall side. <coughs> the wall didn't jump. That's the problem. <coughs> Sorry about that guys. So I just take my headset off for that cough. It felt like a big one. Um, yeah, the wall didn't jump, so Quintarka didn't really stand much of a chance of saving that. It's just annoying. We need to keep more clean sheets. We won our last league match 4-2 against Sutton United, but at one point I think we were 2-0 up or 2-1 up. Um, and then we took it to, I think it was either 4-1 or 4-0, or four nil, something like that, and then we conceded again. So we need to find a way to tighten up the defence a little bit more. And again, it's to do with the fact that they're gelling. I don't think we've played the same back four in every game so far this season. There's always been an injury or a player who's not quite fully fit, which means we're forced into a change. And it is quite frustrating. My ideal lineup is Via, uh, Kirch, Haynes and... No, sorry. Via, Haynes, Cartwright and Jones. That's my ideal back four. Kirch is there at the moment because Haynes is on the bench, I think, or injured. I can't remember now. There's a reason why Kirch is playing there. Kirch is having a decent game as well. It's just not quite going for the rest of them. That, however, from Beckhold, that is a fantastic goal. Beckhold is carrying on his form from 2014. He is scoring very, very good goals. Crucial goals as well. He scored a couple of winners for us. Um, that was Smith with the shot going over the bar. I think the idea of bringing Beckhold further inside the pitch has actually proved to be a good one. Um, his stats aren't that different this year to what they were last year. He was strictly a left winger slash striker last year, whereas now he can play more in the midfield, and he does make things happen. And he had the ability to do that last season. It's just because he wasn't trained for those positions, um, his performances used to be affected by that. Whereas now, because he can play in those positions, he does dictate the game. It follows his tempo a lot more. And playing him behind one striker is quite good. Playing be him behind two strikers is even better. He actually acts as a, as a third striker most of the time. Which is part of what a Trequatista is supposed to do. So uh, it definitely works out for us. And having Abdullah sitting deep on in front of the back four means that Beckhold can exploit that space without it costing us too much in the defensive area. Or oh, Wilson. Keith Wilson there with a fantastic opportunity to make it three. And unfortunately he hit the post. He's having a good time as well. He likes to ghost in at the back post when the ball's crossed in from the left. Scores some good goals that way. Not Beckhold's best ball. I'm not sure whether Delamond works on the left-hand side or not. Obviously he crossed the ball for Kramer's goal. And he does play well. But I think he's better suited to playing inside too. It's almost like a fight between him and Beckhold as to who gets that cam roll. And when Bobo plays as well, Bobo can play well on the right-hand side, though. So he has that advantage. But the three of them are going to be fighting for that cam slot for the season. Even now, I mean, I know I made this team. But until the game generates their stats, you don't really know who plays best in what position. For example, Kramer and Smith. One of them's a target man, one of them's a... a complete forward I think it is or a poacher 
they can easily swap between them at the moment. They're both capable of playing as a target man and they're both capable of playing as a poacher. It's just a question of which one suits that position better. Kramer seems to be a poacher, the way he took that ball around the keeper there and poked it in. <clears throat> and he is currently playing in the poacher's role. However, I believe he's taller than Smith, which technically makes him better in the air. So he could suit the target man role. Target men don't have to be tall. They just have to be good at headers. Um, it helps to be tall. It does give you that advantage. But if you've got a good jump, you're just as likely to be a target man as you are a, a complete forward or an advanced forward, whatever it might be. <coughs> Jones conceding the penalty there. Not very happy with him. I just realised, actually. Oh, that is sped up. This match is really dragging on, it seems. <coughs> I know I did some ex explanation before the match, but we're ten minutes into the episode and we're not even at half-time yet. I suppose there's been a lot of action. There's been four goals so far in this first half. This could be the fifth. And it is the fifth. Again, you know, 3-1. It felt like we were in control. And now it's 3-2. It feels like we're on the back foot. And I, I don't trust my defence still. <coughs> it's all about getting to know your team, like I was saying earlier. I don't trust Vince to be able to, to keep a lead right now. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Taking a drink and clearing my throat at the same time. Not a nice sound. Anyway, yes. I don't trust my defence. There was one game we were 2-0 up and we ended up losing 3-2. That gives you an example as to why I don't trust my defence. Because the attacking players were doing their job still. They were still making chances, getting shots on target, testing their goalkeeper. It was just our defence that weren't putting the right tackles in. We ended up losing the game. And that was the match where I was asked to explain why we'd lost, because we were 2-0 up and doing really, really well. And then suddenly we were 3-2 down in something like the 88th minute with no real chance of getting back into it. And now look, 3-3 three, three all. George Purcell with his second goal of the season. Hornchurch seemed to have a good team, actually. I recognise some of these names. Bodkin and Purcell, I reckon. And um, Asher Cody. I recognise that name as well. <coughs> that was Via. Sorry, Grant, not Via. That was Grant not picking up his man in the middle properly. That's what cost us that goal. Uh, right. Bobo on for Beckhold at half time because Beckhold is injured and Bobo is a good impact player. I'll leave it at that for now. We've got Marshall, who's changed his name to Andrew, not Anthony. Um, he can come off the bench and maybe make an impact on that wing. I haven't seen much from him yet so far this season. I had the same problem with him last year. It took him a couple of seasons to get into it and then he became my first choice right winger, ahead of Thompson, believe it or not. Uh, and Thompson didn't even make it into this one, so... As much as I liked Thompson, I feel we've combined Thompson and Beckhold into the Beckhold for this year. And we got a little bit of, of Thompson in Wilson as well, Keith Wilson. <clears throat> Just in their style of play and the way they take the ball and long shots, the way they ghost in at the back post. Um, <clears throat> I feel like Thompson wasn't really needed. He wouldn't get much of a game. That's the main reason why I left him out. There's Abdullah pushing quite high up the pitch, actually. Luckily, we, we are good at holding on to the ball in those sorts of areas. Even when Smith and Kramer managed to lose it between them there, Bobo was there to pick it up again. And here is Wilson with the corner, which, as you remember, Thompson used to take for us. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's another corner, which, again, Wilson should be swinging into the middle for us. There's the cross. Cartwright went up for the header. Couldn't quite win it. We leave men back for corners. Hornchurch and quite a few of our opponents, actually, don't seem to leave any men forwards. So whenever the ball comes out of the box like that, we're always the favourites to win it. And because we leave men up there, um, we're able to get the ball back into the box and, and actually get the second ball. Uh, which I think I said this either in a FIFA episode or in this episode, one of these episodes. Um... You get just as many goals these days from the second ball as you do from the first one. It's all about whoever whoever wins the second ball is favourite to do well with it. That's how it works these days. You see a lot of goals scored from outside the box from corners now because the, the midfielder made the gamble, got the ball and, and took a shot basically. And it's gone arrowed through the crowd of players into the back of the net. 
That was an atrocious free kick from Jones. Not even close, that one. Okay, Smith is injured. And we don't have a sub striker. Fantastic. On that note, I am going to move Smith back to here alongside Bobo. Kramer there. And I'm going to bring on Marshall for Smith. And then put Marshall on the left. Delamond in the centre here. <coughs> um, no. How do I do it? Is it here? Yes. You are a shadow striker. And you shoot more often, run wide with ball, pass it shorter, cross from deep, cross more often, roam. That'll do. So now we've got Bobo and Delamon playing next to each other in that attacking. We've got the Shadow Striker, Ghosts in behind the main striker. <coughs> and then we've got the Trek Artista who will just float around in that free space and try and make something of it. Something else I've just noticed. Jones is on very low rating. 5.9. So we'll bring Klopmas on for the rest of this game. See if uh, if he can do any better. Right. Grant to Wilson. Into the box. Towards Bobo. Klopmas at the back post. Well, not back post. Near post. <coughs> I'm so used to saying back post. When the ball goes through like that. Bobo did very well to distract the defender to let the ball go through. Good ball from Wilson in the first place. Bobo did just enough there. Keeper error. Klopmas ghosting in. I'm using that term a lot as well now. Ghosting. Klopmas coming into the box with no one really watching him um, and finishes into what is essentially an empty net. If that's the goal that wins the game for us, I'll be happy. It's not pretty, but it's practical. It puts us through to the next round of the competition. Right, Bodkin. Oh dear. Abdullah missed the header. Ah! Four all. Poor defending. That is really poor defending. Oh man. I think it was Marshall actually. I said Abdullah. I think it was Marshall. He missed the header. Here. Sat right up for him and he missed it. Klopmas went for the challenge. Marshall missed the ball again. <coughs> and it got passed through and the goal was scored. Not good enough, really. Should be playing a lot better than that. A lot better. Definitely need to have a look at our defence between now and uh, and January, really, so that we can bring in some decent defenders in the transfer window. Even though in the in the uh, Vanarama South you do have... you can make transfers all season... Um, if we're signing from teams above us, they only really become available during transfer windows. So, uh, <coughs> we definitely have to keep an eye on that. As for now, though, we're in extra time. Because something else you can do in the FA Trophy, you can ask for extra time and penalties in the first tie of the round. Um, you don't have to go to a replay first. And, you know, in terms of congested fixture lists, that's quite handy to have. In terms of how I'm feeling right now, the confidence in my team... I probably would have preferred a replay, but there you go. Bobo making space for the shot, but not doing a very good job of it. I don't know whether I should move Delamond into a more central midfield position now, and just try and keep the ball in that advanced area. <coughs> it's a strange one, really. That is Marshall with a cross to the back post, though. Delamond there. Should have left it to Wilson, decided to take it on himself, and then lost it. Again, though, we have more men behind the ball than they have in front of it, so uh, managed to pick it up. Klopmas to Marshall. Round the corner to Kramer. Delamond, back of the net. 5-4. I don't think Kramer meant to do what he did there, but it worked for us, so I can't really complain. So that was Marshall there. To Kramer. Defender knocked it across the face of goal, so it can't be offside. And there was Delamond <coughs> with the finish. It's a very high-scoring game, this one. It's not quite the same as losing 7-0 to Boreham Wood, but, you know, it's a win, at least, so it is up there. Kramer again, he scored twice in this game, and he seems to have lost his shooting boots since. That's twice where I think he could have hit it, and he's just dawdled a little bit and then lost it. He needs to do better than that if he wants to stay in my team. 
needs to do a lot better than that. Quintarco with the ball forward. Again, right on the toe of Kramer. To Wilson this time. Inside to Delamond, who is finding that space, as is Bobo. Floating around in front of that back four. Look at that. Great run by Delamond. Well found by Bobo. <coughs> and hopefully that's now good night, Hornchurch. We're not even at half time in extra time yet, and we've pulled away for a two goal lead. Mind you, we did have a two goal lead when we were 3 1 up as well, so this game is by no means over. That, though, I was just saying about their finding space. That is a great ball by Bobo. Fantastic run by Delamond. Wrong footed the keeper. Good finish. Good all round team goal, that one. Ball forward from Matt Quintarka ends in a goal for Delamond. Alright, Purcell hit his own teammate. Gone out for a goal kick. Uh, half time and extra time. Start the second half. I think I've made yeah I've made all three subs. There's no real changes I can make now apart from uh, tactical ones. No substitutions, but just tactical changes. There aren't really really many I want to make though. We've had our strongest run of play in this formation. This might even be a formation that I'd plan on using more often in the future. Who knows? That was Delamond on for his hat trick. I think he scored twice, hasn't he? Yeah. He scored the last two goals, didn't he? So he is on a hat-trick. Fingers crossed for him, then. Bring him inside, and he, he makes things happen. Keep him outside. He does cross for goals, but I wouldn't say he was as effective. Kramer there taking a gamble. Personally, I, I'd rather he shifted that out wide. But, uh, you know, he's on a hat-trick as well, so... You have to expect him to be a tiny bit selfish. Quintaka comes and claims that one. Does a good job. Throws it out to Klopmus. Inside to Abdullah. Forward to Delamond. <coughs> These two like coming deep for the ball as well. Delamond and Bobo. They are very, very similar players. But I do feel we need both of them in the team. They are making things happen right now. They are playing very, very well. They linked up well for the goal, as you saw. They're providing good cover for Abdullah. He's not really on his own in that deep deep roll. Uh, Marshall drifts inside as well, so it's almost like we have four centre midfielders playing in that position. Alright, here's Wilson with the free kick, and he's made a mess of it as well. <coughs> That's frustrating, actually. They have really good free kick taking stats, and yet they can't really hit a barn door with a machine gun right now. That is, that's frustrated me in the last game as well, was that. They always seem to hit it way too hard or just miles off target, but they have really good free kick taking stats. So unless I'm missing something, I'm not really sure why they're not good at free kicks. <clears throat> I probably am missing something. I'm probably missing something huge. Right, Kramer. Again, miscontrolled it. Cartwright doing well. He's had a solid game actually out there, Cartwright. I haven't seen him do much wrong. <coughs> There's Klopmus down the line to Marshall. Inside to Bobo. Down into the channel for Kramer. Again, lost the ball. Should have done better there. But that's full time and we have won. Ten goal thriller. But we have come out on top. Six goals to four. So, you know, we conceded four goals and I'm not very happy with that. But we have done well to win the match. So, like I said, guys, um, the next episode, unless something important happens, the next episode will be uh, a season review. So I'll tell you guys where we finished in the league, who was top scorer, things like that. So uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed watching the video. And until next time, I will see you soon.